nine. Um, my, the, the main <coughs> thing I thought for the minutes is just, my name just has one L. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but they were great. They were like really good recaps with the, with the info about, um, yeah. that we needed. Melissa has, has one L or Maxwell has one L? Oh, Melissa has one L. Maxwell definitely has two. Yeah, okay. good point, good point. Are you on the December minutes? Um, it's actually that, that note is for both minutes, but yeah, we have um, December minutes to go over first. I get a, just a, a typo uh, in the... Um, First paragraph in the item three um, about the uh, gaining ground. Um, the sentence about Cavicchio Greenos. Yeah. The source of leaf and wood chip, not ship. Chip as in chip, as in potato yeah. chip. <laughs> okay. I can correct these. Yeah, it's actually it was kind of interesting to go through and and relook at the the uh, the uh, zoom on uh, gaining ground because it's sort of oh, like yeah. goes by so fast. But you know, some interesting stuff there. Um, both Joe and I were talking about how we don't know what this is, but I I did just look up the spelling. It's a it's a tilther like T I L T H E R. Did I spell it incorrectly? Yeah, I think it, it was spelled without the H. Okay. <laughs> Is that Johnny? I mean, I, I, I looked it up, but obviously <laughs> But it did. had a nice looking tool. I don't know. It might be. Handy. It does. Yeah. It, um, it looks like it's like the least tillage possible. So it's just doing like the very top of the soil to break up. Um, break up the top first. So look, le like. le less than a disc harrow. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. This is like a tiny, very lightweight hand pushed thing. So it would just be like. It's got like a drill motor. Don't you put like a drill in it or something like that? Uh-huh, yep. Yeah. I always thought a rock would kill it in a second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably not for. The picture, there are no rocks. <laughs> no rocks. <clears throat> All right, so. You're still on December? We're still on Next. December, yep. Okay, item five. Um, let's see, the um, third sentence. Some of the farms were in it, W-E-R-E. Mm -hmm. And then uh, stick the before idea with the idea that we would do a second one. Okay. I'd be totally screwed because Lice has already gone through this and corrected a bunch of things. <laughs> All right, do folks have other things for December? Nope. Does someone wanna to move to approve them? Joe, I guess it's just you and me and, oh wait, Steve never came back. I don't. No. Nope. I'm still trying to figure it out. 
Um, we can we can get his notes if we if he has any. Maybe I should call him like Lise used to. Yeah, we had him by voice. I'll call him. <clears throat> Liza. Hi, Liza. <laughs> you haven't gotten very far. It's okay. Hi. We're on the December minutes, but we lost Steve, so we... Oh, no. <laughs> I'm trying to call him. He's not answering. Declined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, maybe we should just move forward and, and approve the December minutes if people don't have any more edits. Liza, did you have anything for December? Nothing, nothing. Were there edits? Great. Yeah, there were like three, <laughs> yeah. three typos or like. Yeah, three typos, nothing oh. major. Oh. All right. I was saying, if you hadn't already gone through them, I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> Sorry, no one knows. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right. right. Let's catch all my text. <laughs> motion to approve. I motion. Motion seconded. Second. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so um, on to January minutes. Um, my my name again. Um, oh, whoops. <laughs> okay. <not> that one. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Um, does anyone have any edits there? Mm. Yeah, item three, um, the sentence that has Brian Windmiller. Um, I'm not sure how you spell his first name, but um, Brian Windmiller has been seeding it, not seeded it, seeding. Mm -hmm. okay. I think you spelled Brian right. I'm not sure about the Windmiller. It might be Muller. I, heard, I looked it up. That is correct. Oh, that is correct? OK, good. I had, to, I had to find him on the internet, but yeah, that's, that's apparently correct. Or at least that's what the internet says. That's good enough in a court of law. <laughs> Google agreed. Any, any other items there for January minutes? No? Chip, did you have anything else? Uh, no. Okay. Oh, Steve called back. <laughs> um, Maybe I at least used to put them on speaker. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. He was screening me. Um, do you want Do you want to be on the phone or are you working on the computer? Why didn't I just put you on speaker till you get it? Okay. We approved the December minutes, but we're doing January now. Did you have any edits for January? No. Okay. We just had some typos. I move to approve. 
Great. <laughs> Jumping right in. <laughs> okay, great. <clears throat> Next on the agenda, news about Concord Farms and Farmers. Anybody have any news? Snowstorm, everything still standing? Here, when we were traveling out here a few months ago, we yeah. Well, we're going to get uh, Tori came this morning and we did some video. Oh, okay. you did? Yeah. Yeah. Fun. What did you video? Oh, uh, you wanted to talk a little bit first that she's going to just patch it in here and there. Uh huh. We did, uh, we propagating some uh, butterfly plant cuttings. Uh huh. And planting a few seeds in a greenhouse. And, uh huh. Uh, uh, Chloe is definitely a couple of maple trees. He was interested in all that stuff. Oh, that sounds exciting. And Perfect. Uh, we had uh, not too much to show, but we've been germinating a few seeds to see how they come out. They have two uh, different uh, pollinator flower mixes we did. They seem to be kind of good. From the last year, sunflower seed is not up yet, but I think it will. Cool. <clears throat> you were the perfect February stop. If someone had filmed us today, it was like we called the account. <laughs> right um, at 11. We moved some things <laughs> around in the greenhouse. It was very boring. <laughs> oh, and we get some seating in the greenhouse too. Perfect. Leaks and things now. Uh huh. Good. Cool. We were doing work on machinery up until the last couple of days. We kind of caught up on that. Uh huh. Oh. Good, Steve. Was Great. it was it was it easy enough? Yeah. 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 She actually uh, she went to the grandfather used to have a big potato farm down Long Island. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Agriculture a little bit. She does gardening at home and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it worked out good. Good. Nice. How long was she there? Well, a couple hours. Mm. Okay. Uh, she spent quite a bit of time setting up and worrying about life and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, then we moved around and we actually did it in three different places. Oh, okay. Nice. Well, I'm glad so that where, yeah. where are these going to be released and stuff? I mean, I can't remember. They're going on YouTube, the same as the other ones. Okay. So yeah. they're not going to be like squished together. It'll be like a separate. Individual yeah. smaller mm -hmm. one. And then I think she's going to be able to take stuff from everybody's and make like one before Ag Day or something that's a little more, you know. Yeah. And is it up to, the town of Concord has a YouTube or the. Yeah. Ag, yeah. Okay. And then there'll be like a playlist of them too so you could watch them all one after another like mm -hmm. at some point but you could also just watch one uh and then we can also like individually link them so you could be like you know barrel could link to theirs they don't have to link to everybody's <laughs> no i think you'll find her easier to work with she she's interested and she asks easy questions and but <laughs> She's so pleasant on the phone, so I I have high hopes. <laughs> I think Bri Brian's next. <laughs> we, we, told her, we told her we would do a uh, blueberry pruning. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, um, that's coming up. So well, that's coming up, yeah. So that's what I was working on today. Do you think it's too early? We usually prune in March, but I I don't think it's too early. Um, I, wow. I don't, you can see, but my hands are completely covered with. <laughs> from the, the rose bushes have decided. Yeah, you got to cut the rose bushes out first. <laughs> <laughs> I hate, I hate those perennial plantings. They're like deadly. Yeah. Before you know it, it's like poison ivy and multiflora rose. Yeah. Well, see, a couple places that look like there might be poison ivy. I was wearing one glove, so let's hope that did the trick. <laughs> like a control. <laughs> So the one advantage to pruning, well, the one advantage to pruning everything at the last minute 
is that you can see the fruit buds much easier the later it gets because they get nice and fat and round. Um, so especially when we have people who are inexperienced uh, pruning the blueberries, we like to wait so we can be like, yeah, that's, that's going to be a fruit. Don't cut. I mean, you can cut some of them off, but just be aware. Yeah. I have an off topic question actually for it's not we're we're you know starting to plan for another greenhouse uh -huh. stuff is here do you, did you guys have a, a electrician you use that was for hooking stuff up or did you just do it yourself we've had many electricians they've all disappeared after <laughs> You can't do it yourself. I think like it's they're gone. I'm supposed to, but <laughs> it, so I have no one to recommend. The best situation we had was when we actually just hooked up these one. The new ones are on solar, mm -hmm. and so it was all low voltage, and we were able to do it ourselves. And um, after learning that, I was able to over the phone fix something in the old one. But for the for the like higher voltage needing electrician, I, it, it's been like, there's no one who returns my calls anymore. Yeah. Just, oh yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It is the hardest thing. Like I like, I'm like, should I go to electrician school or something? <laughs> like, I, that's been on the table in terms of a reasonable solution to the problem. <laughs> Yeah, I was hoping you had like a miracle answer. So never mind. <laughs> well, I think I think you should go, and then you could probably help us out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We would we would pay you, you know, handsomely. I think. Yeah, <laughs> it it seems like a good business to go with, but um, yeah. I had um, some pumps that I'm de dealing with on a property, and. and there's a place uh, called Hayes Pump, and I think they're in West Concord. And uh, I, I just, you know, well, I was talking to him. I said, well, you know, do you have enough labor? And he said, oh, we're desperately looking for two people right now. Mm -hmm. and people that have no experience at all, they're starting at $30 an hour. And I think, God, that sounds like a pretty good deal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You can probably do it part time, you know, yeah. and still farm. Yeah. I have some. I'll send you an email, uh, Liza, with the name of someone we use. Mm -hmm. That you know, like everyone, you know, you just he at least hopefully will return your call. It's gonna be some cajoling to get him to show up, but right. right. <laughs> It's not like you'll be like, how was he rated on Yelp and Angie's <laughs> List? I just, you know, someone who was maybe not a jerk. That's all. <laughs> I, I, he did our greenhouse. I mean, I use him for a lot of stuff because I, you know, manage a facility aside from the farm, you know, he does a lot of work for us. Okay. That would be great, Dan. Thank you. Um, yeah, you can copy me on that because we have a project that was abandoned okay. that isn't low voltage, so I haven't tried to do anything with it, <laughs> but I have all the parts. Um, okay. Interesting. What's going on there, Dan, besides blueberry pruning? Oh, ordering seeds and... Uh, we use North Country fertilizer. I, you know, I'm talking to the guy today because I don't know with the supply chain stuff. I figured we better get our order in early. So, but uh, it's more like trying to figure out why the transmission is not working in the truck. Mm -hmm. but, uh, what are you? Uh, what What have you been up to? Well, <clears throat> we think a lot about our truck. I recently saw our mechanic and he told me to dig a hole in the field and push it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I don't is not. They let you do that in Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah. 
you have to get it like disposed of correctly. <laughs> oh, I think Steve is here because I'm hearing our talking in both places. So I'm going to hang up the phone. Um, yeah, that's, that's Melissa, cool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to, I have to deal with kid pickups and stuff. Yeah. But, um, we could wrap it into um, um, Concord Farms and Farmers. Katie was, uh, can introduce herself and was interested in um, ag. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry, say that again. I, I was saying you could introduce yourself and uh, it can be news about farms and farmers. Okay, I'm Katie Fahey and I'm, I was interested in potentially helping out with Ag Day. So I was oh. sort of wanting to hear um, what that was all about. Yeah. But unfortunately, um, I, my kids are, are calling. So I, I have like a couple of minutes, but I- you, um, Yeah, maybe we could plan on talking, like we could talk over the phone. I could tell you about Ag Day and like you've gotten to meet people here. Okay. Uh, Sounds great. Until September. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm going away this week. Then I'm back after that, and so we can set up a time to talk. Yeah. That sounds. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Katie. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um. Okay. Steve, are you there? I was hearing us. Microphone off. How's that? Is that better? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so we did our updates, electrical problems, truck problems. Um, let's see. We have spring forum update is next on the list. Um, Steve, you made it here. Do you have any updates about speaker possibilities or? Not really, yeah. I forgot what I mentioned before. There's a <clears throat> new person in extension. There's a pollinator person. Her name is uh, Hannah Whitehead. But uh, when I talked to her, she seemed to feel that she had her hands full. She just knew on the job and she's not ready to go out and do stuff yet. Okay. So I, I think I talked a little with Liza maybe and we uh, maybe back off on that for a forum subject mm -hmm. or else come up with a program elsewhere. Yep. Hmm. And I did indicate to the pollinator committee that we'd be doing seeds and plants for uh, sale to Concord residents and a number of the farms. We do have the videos. Um, so do we, what are other people thinking about like a uh, spring forum? finding someone or postponing. I know Happy had those pollinator ideas that she sent. Um, Happy also, when she sent them to me, also indicated she hadn't had any luck finding anybody to talk. Okay. So yeah. she was also wondering if we needed to reevaluate. Yeah. But they were a good talking point. I, I forgot, I did see something on an email this morning related to pollinators and I was going to explore that before the meeting and I didn't do that. Um, if there's something I see tomorrow on that, I'll send an email around about it. Um, when I was um, signing up for my um, pesticide license continuing education, um, they had something about neonicotinoids are now going to be restricted use yeah. after the license, yeah. uh, effective in July. So right. I'm, I don't know if anybody at the pesticide division of the Mass Department of Agriculture would be hmm. interested in talking about that. 
That's a good thought, Chip. Mm -hmm. That's mostly regulatory, though, in a way. Yeah, yeah so it is regulatory. Yeah. What is restricted use pesticide and what that mm -hmm. means? You know, I, I don't know that um, the general population of Concord would be all that interested. It kind of takes care of itself because theoretically nobody will be able to buy that without a commercial license. Right. I mean, the main thing is if they have landscapers still wanting to use it potentially inappropriately, then the landowner could say, well, why are you using that? But, right. They're doing the grandfather thing that Steve had talked about so that people that have been using it can still use it or I don't think so. Um, I mean, I remember when it came up earlier, there was talk about how it would be grandfather, but maybe I'm mistaken. Oh, that was for town use of neonics on town owned land, the oh. warrant. This is like a different state regulatory thing for like anyone using them. I bet the only grandfathering will be if you already bought some, you're allowed to use it. I'm not sure as you can, uh, well, maybe, but I think that's why they gave a notice so the stores could get rid of it and not no, so it's not be holding right. inventory they can't sell and so on. Oh, okay. So you better dump your stockpile, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> um. So it, does the right the regulation? Uh, I mean, it wouldn't even affect you because you have you have to be a, a certified uh, pesticide applicator. Uh, but even to use the coated seed, or is it just a spray? Good question. Yeah, you ought to know that. <laughs> I know. I, I, <laughs> well, he he's all set. So <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I I read the same email, and I'm I'm I think I'm going to one of those sessions, so I'll find out. <laughs> yeah, let us know. <laughs> well, I think what it means is you have to have the license to oh, use it which means hopefully you read the directions. Right. Well, right, but I mean, the license means you have to have an actual license that you pay for, but- And you, does that and you mean, have to go to courses, yeah. Right, but does that mean coded seed or, or just uh, concentrates and, and so forth? I, well, I, I suspect that the state is broad brushed, you know, anything with neonicotinoids. Yeah, in it. I, know. I think you're right, but I don't. But I, I, if you have the license, you know, and you and there's nothing on the label that says you can't use this for seed treatment, then I think you're okay for seed treatment. Yeah. No, the thing, a lot of the seed that's on the market is treated, and if, if you can't use that without license, a lot of people are uh, going to have a problem getting seeds, I think, one sort or another. Right. Because a lot of the seed you can't get it, it, you know, they just treat it as as a matter of course uh, for a lot of varieties. Well, I was interested though. I, I talked to Johnny's, and uh, they said none of their treated seed has neonics in it. None of it does. That's what they said. Oh. Huh. Hey, you know, before we became organic, we used to buy a lot of Harris seed and all of them. Things like corn were all treated with it. You know, when I go to these um, uh, pesticide courses, most of the people there aren't farmers, they're landscapers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're big on um, uh, neonicotinoids because they last a long time. Right. You know, grubs. I think they talk about grubs. I think part of the law is that if if a landscaper wants to use neonics they have to get explicit permission from a landowner but i'm not right, sure i think that's that. right uh so they actually have to apply for you know they have to make you sign something that we're going to use this and you signed off on it 
even if they're licensed and, and you know, that's what they decide they want to use. It's interesting. I, I mean, I think I'm going to the session, so I'll, I'll report back. Sorry. Now, is the organic farm, are you spraying anything that you'd have to be certified to use? The only reason I'm certified is because I have to train anybody who works on the farm, on any farm that sprays anything, the workers have to be trained by a certified pesticide applicator on how to safely work on a farm that uses pesticides. So I probably, I don't know if you use any pesticides, but I use like Dipel and then Trust and uh, we use Surround and we use Sulfur, but it's all not stuff that I would normally need a license to apply. The only okay. reason I need a license is to train people. Okay, so as long as I continue to, to put it on myself, then I have to worry. Uh, if you have anybody that works on your farm that's working in any field that you, that that you have treated, you need to train those people on how to work on a farm where pesticides are used. I'll have to get the information on where you where you go go for the trainings or something. We got in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we got we got in trouble. <laughs> That's how this started. We didn't know we had to because nothing we were using would require it, but. We got, we got in trouble. We got. I think Barrett's Mill does a. You guys do a train the train or a, you go to a course or. We used to go to a course, yeah, um, and then you were, yeah, I you were. You but you have train. to maintain that. Yes, but we just um, stopped spraying. Oh really? Okay. Not permanent solution. I mean, not that's not why we stopped, but we've stopped going. Um, but yeah, I think lease had to maintain, but it wasn't, every, maybe it was every two years or something. Yeah. I have to get like 10 credits or 12 credits every three years. Yeah. To maintain yeah. my license. We kind of, um, <coughs> we were very concerned with keeping up with that because they were cracking down mm -hmm. and then we sort of stopped spraying anyway. And so I'm not sure where it's at, if we were going to look into that. We're, we think our boom sprayer might not work at all. Um, so yeah, basically we- What do you do about brassica caterpillars? Um, we have wormy brassicas. We do too, but we spray. Yeah, I we, think that would be way wormier if we didn't. I mean, we've just never had any success. Like I've worked place where we did, well, I actually never did brassicas, but like, um, we have tried with the rascas and with the aphids. Now we've been trying to, we, we just haven't. Yeah. Like we've never I, seen enough success. So we've like, you know, for some things we'll do protect net. I mean, the, the, the worms and the cabbage, we basically do nothing. Okay. Um, I've attempted to like plant cilantro for the aphids and the Brussels sprouts probably does nothing, but spraying did nothing also for us. So. Yeah, no, and aphids are impossible. Um, but yeah. The, at, the the at the last vegetable growers meeting, there was a program on uh, onions and leeks. And, yeah, there's uh, tests. Make you think you don't want to grow them anymore. There's so many things coming into them. That's right. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Leaf miner and leek moth. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, I've yeah. had good. I've had good luck with dipel with brassicas for wor yeah. um, worms, not aphids. Yeah, worms. Yeah, yeah. yeah we use it all the time. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't grow them without spray. I, I just feel like you have the potential to lose so many. Yeah, and the dipel still works. Right. Yeah. Kind of. People think that if you're spraying. I mean that if you're organic, that you're not using any chemicals. I like it. I, I look at it as an opportunity to educate people. I know. I mean, yeah, we just never, it's not even like that the actual chemical didn't work, just working it into our system. Just never. Yeah, spraying is a pain in the ass. It's such a pain. I am, it, it's on lease because I just, uh, yeah. 
if there's anything we can do to have brass fits without it, I'm willing. We're so, right on the too. So getting, uh, putting a Tyvek suit on and a mask on an organic farm isn't a bad, good look. Yeah. No. But, have, you, uh, have any of you used any uh, beneficials for insect control in the field? No. I've used, uh, we've used Pediobius and uh, the moth trichogramma for the astrinii for the uh, European corn borer. And I use them in the greenhouse all the time. Um, but they work sometimes, they don't always work. Have you used them, Steve? Uh, no, we used them in the greenhouse some. And uh, I was trying to think if we used one release of something in the field last year, maybe. Like the moss for the European corn borer are supposed to work pretty well, but you have to buy, you know, a number of weeks worth. And it's just, I don't know how you know, you know, if you still get them, you, you, were they working? They just weren't working well enough. Uh, you I count them and see if you got the right number. Yeah, yeah, right. They're tiny. They're like the tiniest <laughs> insects that exist. I think they're one of the smallest insects. Uh, we we, we the use thing we're thinking about is Pediobius, which is for the bean beetle, which I have used before unsuccessfully, but I'm just tired of those things. They drive me crazy. We we use a wasp for housefly control. We, well, oh, I think wow. that's helped us a lot. Hmm. You just release it in the barns and in the farm stand? Well, around any place it might be a little wet, around manure or puddles yeah. in the vineyard or around the stand, any wet places. You guys use Pyganic at all? I use Pyganic for leaf hopper, and that's, that's it. It's the only thing it works on. And it doesn't really work on it, but I feel like it feels <laughs> I, I think it, it does something, and so it makes me feel a little bit better that I'm spending lots of money doing something that might be effective. I have a question. No, I was going back to the brassicas. Are you mostly um, spraying them when they're small? Yes, I, they basically get sprayed. No, not when they're small. I don't, okay. When they're small, I don't care about the damage. It's yeah. like when they're right uh, on the verge of marketability, so right when the head is forming uh, yeah. of cabbage, uh, you know, kale is different. You got to spray it two or three times, yeah. but cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower, I usually spray them once. Mm -hmm. um, and that's enough. As long as you get them right as they're, you know, so that the people who are buying the head or yeah. so I don't have to throw the head away because there's a worm. Yeah. So right when that cabbage head is starting to like really fold in and form, yeah. That's when you spray them. Of course, if you have five different things that are maturing at different times, then yeah. sometimes you end up spraying things twice just because they are in the same place. But, but the uh, Dipel and and Trust work yeah. for sure. I don't know about Grand Evo is supposed to work, but I don't know if it does. Hmm. In a long time, just squishing potato beetles off of yeah, that's the most effective way to kill those. <laughs> we do that too. <laughs> Not the most efficient way, but it's the most effective way. Well, Lisa's bought this um, hand. She, we're going to try out vacuuming them. A oh, little wow. handheld battery powered leaf blower. Yes. Okay. What do you vacuum, vacuum them into? There's a little bag, and then oh. we'll dump out the bag into our soapy bucket, our bucket with soapy water. Oh, I love this idea. <laughs> yeah. I'll report back. Me do. As we said, the crew will be excited to try regardless of the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'm just thinking. I think the crew would be thrilled to try that out. <laughs> I'm like, are we so, we're like an entertainment summer camp? Ooh, they'll <laughs> like this. <laughs> You're, Brian, are you going to try the potato beetle with your uh, flamer? Uh, well, I'm too scared to do it on the <laughs> potatoes that I'm going to try to grow to fruition. 
But what I'm going to do is in between where I saw potato beetles last year and this year's field, I'm going to plant like four rows of cheapo, uh, conventional, whatever, whatever's cheap, you know, $16, $8 for 50 pounds. I don't know what they get now. Uh, and then I'm just going to burn the hell out of those. Eggplant. <laughs> you think they're more attracted to eggplant? Oh, I think the, the potatoes will come up first, though. I guess you could grow the eggplant yeah. in the greenhouse, but so Brian's plan is to trap them and incinerate them all. <laughs> yeah, I've tried it before without much success, but I never had like a fancy tractor yeah. flamer. Yeah. Like I was just like using high school kids with bombs on their backs. <laughs> Well, there might be a market for toasted beetles. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> oh, spring, spring forum, wise. Yeah, we need Liza to rein us back in. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know what to do about this one. I feel like we don't really have a speaker. Do we have another plan? Because the videos are going on, do we want to just do the videos and can this until next year? What are people's thoughts? Excuse me. <laughs> Brian's leaving. <laughs> oh, one down. <laughs> I take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good for the, the videos as being our little project, but. It would be the second year we didn't do a forum. And Joe. Yeah, I don't I mean, uh, we still have some time, but not that much. We'll be here before we know it, so. We're waiting for a May Day party. <laughs> We're all waiting for your opinion, Brian. Oh, what's my <laughs> forum? Yeah. Do we, do we uh, I don't think we're going to be be able to get a speaker in time, um, except for one of us, and we would not be good enough. Uh, so, were you thinking about showing the 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 films or the videos or whatever? Well, I think most of them won't be done by then. Oh. Like we'll still oh, we have three videos. from last year, right? We have the video from last year, but we don't have these videos yet. Right. Time. But we so, might we might be able to have two more. Yeah, maybe. Right? And so that would be how many were done previously? Three. Well, there's like one last year's. It could be like a film festival, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. That actually. Do, do we have any kind of projector thing that we could do outside? We could do popcorn. Do you guys still have popcorn? We we grow popcorn, but you're out. We aren't. Well, no, actually, we do have some, but it's not really a. We don't have a popping plan. I think I looked into it once to see if we could get like rent like a popper. Yeah, we have a, have a kitchen. We, we have a pop. We have a popper. You do? Yeah. Yeah. We still have popcorn from where the chipmunks took it and like put it in the irrigation fittings. Yeah. So every time I pick one up, there's like about a half a cup. <laughs> oh, uh, just cover the ends up. Put some oil in there. And use your flamethrower. There's a lot of them. Oh yeah, for popping it. That's right. You could just pack it in there. Um, there, do we have any kind of projector option for in a tent? Because I don't think so, but that would be kind of fun. Yeah, pretty hard if it's light out. I have one from work that I could. Oh, yeah. What did we use that year that there was the videos we watched in the Shimoni greenhouse? Was that just a regular projector? I have no memory of that. We watched um, 
it was like an interview. It was, a, there was an art and ag dinner and there was a video that had like interviews of farms. I remember that, but I think it was at night. It was, it was late enough that it was dark when, when they showed. Well, I mean, we can do that, right? Yeah, and then our forum's usually in the dark. I mean, I have a digital projector, so. Does it need to be plugged in or is it, I mean, I guess it's yeah. close yeah, enough to power. power. You know, these um, videos that have already been made are theoretically all available to people, you know, online, but people may not know where to find them or they may not get around to it. But if it was presented uh -huh. as a film festival, yeah. you know, five or six of them in a row and then or in between, you know, questions and answers kind of thing, it might be a, a good way to get some audience for the videos. Like, I haven't seen the videos that were seen last fall, and I know theoretically they're available, but I've never gotten yeah, around yeah. to seeing them. And I'm on one of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a, a day when they were going to be presented with a bunch of others, then it might I would be interested, and maybe other people would be too. How far back do they go? How far back? Just last year is what we're talking about. Are there videos from previous years? Or? Well, you know, there's that one, the Kenny Farm one, yeah. you know, with the growing beans. And yeah. I don't know if the ones that were, um, uh, that um, was it Melissa remembering the ones that at the Simone place? Yeah. Um, I don't know if they're still available. Probably. They were pretty good. They were. Um, the Kenny video. I mean, I definitely think we'd have enough to do like, you know, the forum isn't usually very long anyway. Like we definitely have enough videos for like an hour. For an hour. Yeah. Yeah. And if they were broken up with like a question and answer, anybody have any questions about them or, you know, then yeah, it wouldn't yeah. be one after the other after the other. Or broken up with popcorn. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, if we have popcorn there, let me see. People so are going to come for popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you, have to have, you have to have chili powder on it. Chili powder on um, We would need a warm night. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If it's going to be outside, like nights don't get warm for a while. Is this something we could push into like mid-May? Is that pushing it? I mean, I think we would need to. I think it's barely warm enough in. in I think we can do whatever we want, really. But yeah. should uh, we think about going back to Harvey Wheeler? But it would be more fun outside. I think. Yeah. I think it'd be more fun outside and a little more inclusive. It like, is riskier because it could. The weather could just tank. Right. We could close in a tent, but I don't know how dark we'd get it. You just do it in the dark outside. I mean, it gets dark pretty early still in May. We're not late, the less dark it gets. Tent? Is that the idea? This I think so. I'm sorry. Does anybody have a greenhouse that's empty in the April? You know, if it was in the evening in a greenhouse, so you wouldn't have to worry about rain. Right. Like the Simone one, that was in a greenhouse. Yeah. <clears throat> That's true. We'll just move our plants outside. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but the, if we waited till May, we'd also have more. More film. Videos. Yeah. Yeah, potentially. We just, none of us want too much additional work in May. <laughs> exactly. like, I mean, well, I think, I think we, Like a tent is almost as good as a greenhouse, right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you can close it in on three sides or something. Yeah. And one side is the screen. 
if we if we do this in like mid May, are we potentially also like could we do like a little plant sale or something like a pollinator? Like, are we going to be near that? I don't know where some like some of the stuff we have is just stuff we're already growing. So yeah, could do that by mid May, I would think. I just wonder if we could do like if we could have like oh it's gonna be like a little video thing and like oh and then in between the videos there's like plants for sale and like popcorn and it's kind of just a hangout. Right. You can talk to your farmers, ask them questions. To bring bees. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you do it in April, you can kind of be in being announced when you're gonna be open, you know, for retail what you're going to have available. You know, if you have, um, if you're actually selling stuff there, you know, you got different farms, maybe selling the same thing. And, you know, that's a complication. But if yeah, you have yeah. it before you're actually open, you can be telling people, you know, this is when we open, this is what we're going to have. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that in May, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people are open in May, open and selling, you know? Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's not gonna hurt them, you know, to get a little extra publicity, even if you've already open. Yeah, and even if you're not selling the stuff there at the forum, but just telling people about it. I mean, I think ideally you would want it as early as possible just because uh, it's darker earlier. Yeah. Um, the earlier in the year that you go, but uh, it's true that it's just risky because you could get, you know, it could be like a snowstorm or something. Well, is this like something where like maybe we could, instead of selling stuff, like you could be like, like at the stone soup dinner, how we all had like little displays with like pictures or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think if we're doing it <coughs> closer to when we're all busy, like the lower key, the better, <coughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, and like having the videos and popcorn and people there for them to ask questions, like just make it like super. I feel like a meet and greet, like meet your farmers. Yeah, yeah like a really like, really. Like classic film yeah. night, you know? Classic film night. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do like the idea of doing it kind of earlier and in a greenhouse, except for that all of our greenhouses are. Oh. Would the gaining ground barn be of any use? Uh, I don't know if they would make it available, but their barn is a, a very public, uh, public friendly uh, yeah. facility. I have no idea if they would agree to let it be used or want to. But yeah, which one? The gaining ground barn. Oh, oh. good idea. Yeah, it is very nice. It's also quite darker than the outside if you turn the lights on. Yes. Yeah. Um. yeah, I don't know. I've only saw it when it was newer, so I don't know what it's like inside, if it's like full of stuff now. It was very open. But I would assume most, yeah. most barns don't stay open long. That's what I'm thinking. Like it might be full of stuff in the spring, in the winter. Okay. Um, I wonder if I mean the last video I saw was in the Shimoni greenhouse. I wonder if they fill up or if they like in April if they have space, because like they don't grow all the same kinds of stuff as we do. We had talked about doing it in Steve's tent in late April. I don't know. I would think it's darker in the tent than outside, right? Yeah. Yeah. It might still be a possibility. Yeah. I mean, I like the idea of Steve's just because it's what well, got parking and <laughs> it's really accessible to people. Like it's a very and but, popcorn and popcorn. <laughs> so I, I guess if it, 
just because of accessibility, Steve's is easier than probably. I don't, I've never been to the Shakespeare house. No, that's totally true. I was just thinking of a, a warmer, yeah. yeah, if we needed it, but I, I mean, I think Steve's is perfect if we. Can we just tell everybody to bring blankets? Yeah. That'd be cute, like bring blankets and <laughs> tea and we'll have popcorn. <laughs> Um, yeah, I kind of feel like some people might be very into the idea of just hanging out with the farmers and asking questions. Like, I, I know that's a specific crowd, but regardless of the movies, they might be into that. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, sunsets I, I, around 7.35 or 7.40 at the end of April, according to Mr. Google. So we could probably have the event start at 7.00. And it would. Right. You could have a brief, like a period of time where people are just milling about. Yeah. And then start the thing at eight and have it end at nine <laughs> or nine fifteen. Yeah. You you could ask the Simonis because they had the one several years ago and, and you know, if they do mostly retail and not growing it themselves, they might have not the greenhouse might not be stuffed full of stuff at the right. end of April. Right, but we were just talking about like the tent could be just as good and Steve's is such a good spot for everybody. Steve is such a good host. Yeah, true. <laughs> also that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the greenhouse is you can always turn on the heat. The, that's that's hard to do in the tents. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, not in my greenhouse. We wouldn't be turning on the heat. <laughs> <laughs> For plants, yes. Our greenhouse is like the most inaccessible to the public, too. <laughs> we do have a couple radiant heaters that'll help a little, but if um, it was down to 30, why well, they wouldn't be the same. Yeah, it sounds like Steve is fully set up for us. <laughs> we just have to roll in with some kind of computer for a screen when we get to go. I want to see like the old projector with the, uh, yeah. with, the with the sound like going in and out, you know how it does? Steve, you have some home I wonder if uh, we should talk to Tori and see if they have what they have yeah. capability to do. Yeah. Good idea. They, they might have something yeah. Yeah. Right that makes you have power out at the greenhouse, right? Steve? Yeah. Yeah, we have power, all right. Cool. This sounds right. promising. Yeah. I think it's easier than putting together a pollinator program since we already, I mean, Theoretically, we already have three or four or even five of these videos. Right. But what's the old video that was like from 10 plus years ago too? There's yeah. two. Yeah, there's a much older one that Emily dug up that was like 20, 2006, I think. Yeah. Might be kind of fun to see the really old one too, you know? Yeah. I but was it just, I also wondering. You'd have to like edit it, and that's another yeah. step. If we should come up with a pollinator display or something, that could be incorporated into this too. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I wonder if the museum has any old footage or anything. What was the old one you were thinking of? The one that was was done at Buttrix. That ended up in Buttrix uh, at, at, at the Minuteman Buttrix headquarters. It was the. It was a guy who went around and did interviews, right? Yeah. With uh, Steve and with Chip and with uh, Kenny and I think uh, with Pat McGrath mm -hmm. with the yeah. asparagus cutter. Yep. Um, We watched it a few years ago. But I think it's fairly long. 
Yeah. I mean, I think it's like 40 minutes, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should stick with the recent stuff. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, maybe mm -hmm. if, if, if we want to show a little flashbacks, but that means somebody has to edit it. Right. Yeah. Well, our new friend at Minuteman might like uh, that. They might jump on that, or they might be busy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. All right. Very good. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, I think, um, I guess the only thing to do with that is if, which like Liza and I could do is ask Tori if they have a projector type thing. Um, and if not, maybe Dan, we can figure out a way to use yours. Sure. And we'll put on the agenda for next time, like figuring out a date. Steve, I assume you guys already have some stuff planned for April so we could work on your schedule. Have what? I assume you already have some things planned in April, so in, in like figuring out what day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too much so in April. Okay. Um, I don't know how big a TV screen it would take to do the job. I don't know either. I mean, the thing I have, you just like, you know, you project it onto like a, a screen. I, I don't know the size of the one I have, but it might be a little small. I don't know. It's maybe six feet wide by maybe four or five feet high, you know, the old fashioned type you pull the out of the sonic stand. So, I mean, it, 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 I wonder what it costs to rent like a four or five foot TV. I mean, the good thing about a projector is the farther away you move the projector, the bigger the image gets. Right. Project it on the on the tent, a side of the tent. Matter. Yeah, or just on a piece of on a sheet or something. We do have white tent size. We could double up. I mean, I think that's more fun than a TV. Yeah. Because yeah. a TV, that's like sitting in the doctor's office now. <laughs> yeah. Or at the bar or anywhere. Yeah. 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 No, that actually a uh, white tent side might work. Yeah. Oh. I think okay, so if we decide to do this, we should do a dry run. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> We're not setting this up that night. <laughs> People sure this <laughs> yeah. I forget. Sibley, there's this guy, uh, a bird expert in Concord, has written a bunch of books. Sibley. Yeah, he came to and did an event at this. Uh, Thorough Institute where I work. And fortunately, I had nothing to do with it, but the projector didn't work. And the person that set the whole thing up, you know, he was very good natured about the whole thing, but he's doing an entire presentation about birds without any way of visually. <laughs> 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 we'd have to like act it out <laughs> make it a unique experience <laughs> right, who's going to be the tractor this time <laughs> meet conquered farmers <laughs> conquered farm improv <laughs> That would be like the growing plant. <laughs> you you realize this is recorded for posterity. <laughs> I can't imagine anyone is watching it. We're gonna get an email from Chris Carmody. What are you guys doing over there? <laughs> We're following the agenda. Late April spring forum update.
Yeah, nope. moved on. <laughs> um, but I, we can move to Concord Farms video part two if we feel good about this plan. I'm psyched about it. Mm -hmm. I think it's. I think know, it's doable, which is the most exciting. Part. Getting a speaker and trying to figure out a program. Yeah, yeah this is good. It, Actually, it does itself. I think there we were talking about doing a video presentation on a like the first forum that got canceled. We watch we rewatched that video. Anyway, I think it's great. Great. It would be better than having a panel with a table with empty chairs. Yeah. <laughs> panel. Yeah. Let me tell you about pollinators. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we're on Zoom. I wouldn't be allowed. Okay. Um, Concord Farms video part two update. Steve gave us an update, Liza, before you got here about his time today, which sounded great. Oh, great. And Brian's next. Yep. And then I, I did reach out to everybody. I haven't heard back from many people. Um, so I'm... Sorry, we can do anything because I mean we're doing stuff from now on. Yeah. Sorry, to get back to you about it. No, no, you, you got back to me, Dan. You 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 told me you were in. <laughs> uh, and Baron Smell, I got heard from Lise. Um, we're we're good. Everybody who's here is good. <laughs> um, uh, I think I I'm gonna bump salt box again just because if we want to get their bees, we the timing on that would affect that has to happen early enough that they would have to be I think in early April. Um, so I will bug them again. Um, but I think Lise mentioned either doing tulips or um, something like there was, a, she gave threw out a few options of stuff that we could do depending on when the timing happened. Um, yeah. And um, so we've got like the first couple. Of up, so I think it really, you know, most of it's up to Tori, but um, we have, we have some things planned and I'm so happy Steve had such a good experience too. So that was good. Um, Liza, I can get in touch with the salt box folks about the the B date. Oh, great! I'll, I can send you the email I sent them that they didn't reply to. So. <coughs> cool. Um, so that's moving along. Is there other business? We only. I just had one update about Ag Day, and that was the Garden Club got back to me. Um, they don't want to do kitchen tours this next year, not because they're not into them, but because they were having trouble finding people to volunteer their kitchen gardens. Mm -hmm. uh, so they would like to participate again, but more the way a regular nonprofit would. They want a table and give out information and stuff like that. Um, and I said, that was great. So nice. it sounds like it would just be us planning it again this year, which is logistically simpler, so. Not, a, not the end of the world. And I'm happy they want to participate um, the way they want to. So. Um, Katie, who was at the meeting earlier, who I'll talk to um, later, had contacted me about being, I guess she has helped with other events in town and was interested in helping with Ag Day. I told her, I wrote a quick email about um, that's mostly the farmer's market, but we were looking for help with the kids' activity. But I, I haven't really gotten the info about like what aspect she was interested in. Um, so she couldn't stay at the meeting, but I'll connect with her and just see if it's a fit or not. I, I don't know. Um, but I guess she's helped out with some school events. Cool. Like I mean, I think it, like, you know, we had a lot of success last year with the yeah. stuff I mean, we were. Oh definitely needed more help so yeah oh, we for certainly sure. could use could use that I mean I think that that's an area that could be expanded without impeding on the the farmer's market vibe and like the focus still being on the farms um, right but I was just like yeah we don't want to go back in the direction of the the farm garden fair where we were like losing the focus of it um so I, I thought I would just explain that like we want it to be a successful event but we're not looking to like yeah add a lot of things we still want it to be our event yeah 
<laughs> Sounds great. So yeah, that was my only other business was the update about the garden club. Cool. Anybody else? <laughs> Is there anything else we have to be doing for Ag Day? No, I'm still waiting for the town manager still needs to sign off on it officially, but that we're on the police calendar, we should be good. I think there's some stuff we could probably do more ahead of time than we have before. Like if we already know the date, so we get the banner ready and organize the light plant and stuff like that. But I think we need, probably need to talk to the town manager's department a little bit more before we get to there because they need to cover the costs hopefully again. So we need to get them Fully on board. Is, there any, is there any fundraising that has to happen? We're not. I remember it was like a big deal in past years, but. I think how it ended up was that we weren't really supposed to be fundraising. Well, yeah, that's, there were other groups kind of. Doing but there it. were other groups. So Chip helped us out in the and Stone Soup last year. I guess we should more officially ask, but. Maybe Chip can speak to it, but they they were happy that they contributed. So money. all the expenses are publicity related, right? We do have some money in an account, don't we? Yes, um, but it's been hard to access. We don't have a lot either. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like a debit card. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, everybody's uh, fees go to it, but then last year, uh, like so, um, some of the poster money came out of that. Um, so there, there's not much in that account. Yeah, I think sometimes when stuff gets paid for by the town, they also use yeah. something in the account. Speaking um, of posters, if we want to, uh, if we want to publicize, if we're actually doing like a film forum yeah. format, our publicity thing should look like a movie poster. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it would be, it might be fun. Yeah. Um, but that the fundraising thing is a good point in general. The, the printing fee was paid by Stone Soup last year. The, the brochures. Oh, that was the brochures, yeah. Which was awesome. Which was amazing. And we still have brochures. And then, yeah, so Liza, you, the poster printing was by the town. I think that came out, the poster printing, I think, believe came out of our account. Mm -hmm. Not 100% not sure, because it all got a little muddled in the end. But I think that came out of our account. And then we replenished our account with the fees that were collected. Right. Well, not much in that account. And then um, the, all this stuff for uh, the vegetable stuff all got donated. Partially, oh, right. by, partially by Happy's husband and partially by a friend of mine. So, so we um, will need money for art supplies. Yeah, I mean, unless we find again random donors, which we might, because people like to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> that was a fairly easy sell. <laughs> right. Yeah, that is a good point. And also, they haven't always, but the town manager paid the or like they waived the fee for hanging the banner, which sometimes they waived part of it. And that's fairly expensive. And that's really expensive. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so we should just try to get them to waive that all again. Um, Stone Soup um, last year paid for the updated, um, the printing of the updated Guide to Concord Farms. That's my recollection. Yes. Um, but we do try to um, uh, spend some money each year for the benefit of Concord Farms. Sometimes we've done um, advertisements in the spring with a, you know, um, advertising all the farms that do retail. Mm -hmm. um, so that money is available. You know, it needs a, um, uh, a definite request for, you know, a definite proposal. We, we, the Ag Committee, would like to do this. This is what's going to cost. Can you contribute for it? And we'd probably say yes, you know, within a reasonable, you know, reasonable kind of thing. Cool. That's awesome. Thank you, Chip. Well, it's not me. It's the, it's the stone soup <laughs> dinner thing. We, we yeah. haven't had a fundraiser in the last two years because of the COVID. Yeah. So we're oh, not. Oh, you're running out of funds? 
we haven't run out yet, but um, we're not replenishing. So um, that's something to think about too. It's not an infinite supply. Keep that in mind. Got it. But at least you, there's, you know, the Stone Soup Dinner has three people, Jen Vero, me, and Dudley Gore. It's probably easier to deal with us than it is to deal with the town, you know, trying to get money out of the town. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> So if you have a definite proposal, you know, send it to any one of us, three of us, and we'll try, definitely consider it. I was looking for a mail. I was looking at attachments. So that might be useful for the spring forum uh, if we want to advertise that at all. Right. Yes, they could be done for that. I mean, what we've done in the past in the past years, and it's you know different every year, but. We run an ad in the Concord Journal, um, a, a full page ad, but you know, listing all of the farms that do retail, but it's uh, um, plugging or advertising the Spring Forum video um, show would certainly be in line with that. But we're not a publicity committee. We're we're a funding committee. <laughs> so somebody else come up with the idea and send it to us, and we'll probably, you know, within reason, we'll probably say yes. Good. Okay. Any other business? Public comment. <coughs> Brian and Chip, I think you're the public. No comment. No, no comment. <laughs> Should we do the next meeting? March 10th. Is that that's the uh, Thursday? That's the second Thursday. Yep. Good. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, that'd be good for planning for the anyway for April. Okay. March 10th it is. All right. All right. I'm going to adjourn. I'll second it. Yes. Perfect. Liza, we, we started later and went longer without you guiding <laughs> us. <laughs> that would keep us on track. We were doing, we were doing interpretive dances. Oh my gosh. It's a little more fun than when I read it. <laughs> more laughing. <laughs> we all did a prayer pre-meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you, Melissa, for yeah. it. All right. Oh, yeah. Bye. Oh, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you and good night. Here we go.